Blog Talk Radio. Drop that down! The whole fucking show! Drop that down! The whole fucking show! Christian. 
And what does that mean? Does that mean a follower of Jesus Christ? Because there is a huge mixture of religions and, and beliefs here in the United States, and and that's actually you know uh, something that a lot of people think uh, we're founded by and, and what we stand for, freedom. If he doesn't spend his life following the Jesus Christ character, that doesn't make him a lesser man in my book. It doesn't. In fact, if I myself was a religion of a different nomination, just just like a lot of listeners are uh, from different denominations, um, you know, then you probably would look at somebody else who doesn't believe exactly what you believe as uh, a less, I don't know, a lesser person or somebody that uh, is anyway going to burn for all eternity in hell. <clears throat> so uh, I'm not I'm not into that, you know. Maybe you're right, maybe you're not, but you don't fucking know. Nobody knows. Jesus Christ is, uh, uh, he's a character in a book, and he's definitely a lot more than that, too, and he's symbolic, and I can, we can get into that. And we can talk about all the other uh, characters that uh, that were born, you know, start with uh, Horus, the Egyptian god, which, which was recorded way before the uh, time of Jesus Christ. And, and, of course, you know, he was born by a virgin December 25th, which Jesus actually wasn't, but a lot of people think he was. And uh, uh, the whole thing with uh, the 12 disciples, and he was killed and resurrected a few days later, and all that. Anyway, it all sounds just as good as anything else to me. You know what I mean? And I'm not going to base someone's leadership on which one of the stories he chooses to believe, all right? Um, so big deal. And you know what? I don't care that his skin's black. I think a lot of people, a lot, I know that a lot of people are bothered by that. A lot of people uh, in the redneck states of the South, I hear them talk. They're not for equality. They're not. And uh, they have they have no problem uh, talking about uh, their feelings and expressing their ignorance. Uh, and there's always going to be hatred for those who are different, always. So that's uh, a lot of what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to be talking about ballot proposals, things that I voted on yesterday here in California, and uh, and again, you know, the, the big one, the really, really big one that, that really stir, stirred up a lot of controversy is Proposition 8. Proposition 8, they wanted to amend the Constitution to take away the privilege of marriage from same-sex couples. All right, so that was Proposition 8. I was extremely surprised to see that this went through. This went through. They're amending the Constitution for the state law here to change it so that same-sex couples cannot get married. They will not honor that. I can't, I, I'm shocked, especially because here in California. In California, it's the most laid-back, uh, easygoing liberal state that I know of in, you know, on the mainland for sure here in the United States of America. And and they have so much hatred for each other that they're afraid of breaking up the sanctity, the, the what's the word, um, the integrity, the everything, the, the wholesomeness of the traditional marriage of a man and woman. What about the 80% divorce rate? Don't you think that that has affected the fucking integrity of marriage? I mean, you know, it's all wholesome. It's all by the book. It's all the way it was meant to be until it becomes inconvenient. And then you just split up and you just go in. And then it's just that easy. It's that easy. Hey, if you're not happy with your present condition, kabam. All right, try again. Just make sure it's not someone of the same sex because, whoa, we don't want our kids thinking that that's normal. Well, fuck, you know, smarten your kids up. They're going to see it. Personally, I'm not a gay person, 
and so that law doesn't affect me as much as it would if I was somebody hoping to get married to someone in the same sex, but just the sheer uh, spirit behind what that's about, you know, it's it's equality, and and who gives a fuck if uh, if a couple of lesbians want to get married? And here's what it's about, by the way. <clears throat> they can have a what is it? A civil? Um, sorry, I'm I'm blanking on the term here. It's a civil union or some shit like that, which basically means you know they live together and um and for for whatever, you know, in all purposes, uh, uh, they, they're, they're a couple, except when it comes to the, uh, someone dies and then the partner can't get anything. They live together and someone dies and then the way it is w without having the right of being married, then, uh, you know, the, uh, cousin or whoever can come through and take everything away from the lesbian lover carpet muncher partner. My beautiful wife, Sonia, just walked in the room. Hi, baby. Hi. I was just doing an intro, letting people know what it's about. For some reason, they didn't put the info on what the car was going to be about. But um, anyway, we're, we're just talking about uh, some of the ballot propositions. We're going to talk about President uh, Obama. Get used to saying that. How do you like the sound of that, baby? President Obama. I like it. <laughs> yeah. All right. So we're talking about some of the uh, propositions, and we're going to have to talk a little bit about the original ECW. Reason why is I'm expecting some phone calls from some friends from the past. I'm expecting Fonzie, that's right, Daddy, to call in in a little while and uh, talk on the line with us. We got Harry Slash already. He's, hi, Harry Slash. Hi, Harry Slash. We see you waiting. And um, also uh, Scotty Riggs, who... People haven't heard from in a long time. He's going to call in. Dr. Sean Stasiak is going to call in. And we're going to blindside him with, uh, with, this, with this topic and see what they think about it, you know, and say, hey, you know, hey, Fonzie, I don't know what's on the uh, ballot props out there or what was, what you voted for yesterday in, uh, in Florida, but uh, controversial shit here in California. That's right, Daddy. So we're going to get that. Um, and uh, also check out the chat room, baby, while I'm talking, because I know you like doing that. I do like to do that. <laughs> um, another another proposition. That, and here's something. Sonia wanted to come in, SVD, who, by the way, you know, a lot of people listening want to know how you're doing. So that's more important than anything else. So tell everybody how you're feeling, baby. I'm feeling very good. Thank you. She's doing all right. We're looking at the light at the end of the tunnel. Um, I was talking to Dr. Sean earlier, explaining to him that you've only got three chemo infusions left. That's it. That's it. Three more. And uh, that's going to come out so quick, once every two weeks. Bam! Put that chemo pack away, and we're ready to get on. You know, there's, it's a new, there's a lot of changes. It's a new part of our life. We've had, uh, we've been uh, sidetracked, set aside to take care of uh, of this chemo, you know, and uh, next year, it's going to be real important. We've got a lot of exciting stuff happening, and that goes along with having, of course, a new president. When I was talking to Dr. Sean earlier uh, about the timetable we're looking at with the chemo treatments, he said right now it's kind of like after a long flight, and then all of a sudden you feel the airplane start to descend. <laughs> I like that. I can relate. That's where you go, oh, yes, finally. Put this motherfucker down. Get me off this airplane. Yeah. Exactly how I feel. <laughs> yeah. I want her life back. I know, baby, and it's coming. So, uh, one of the propositions that uh, that was on our ballot here, Proposition Four, Sonia and I disagree on, and that's why <laughs> one of the reasons she felt like it was very important to uh, be on the show and express her feelings on it. And uh, Proposition Four is a um well let's see is it is it a, uh, an amendment or i think it's it's a it's a, it's a proposition right but it's it's a change they want to change they want to add this law so that minors who want to get an abortion will first have to notify an adult 
And so the, the abortion clinics, when a minor would come into them and say, hey, you know, I got pregnant, I fucked up, uh, take care of it. You know, uh, later on I'll get married and I won't like it, I'll get a divorce and I'll take care of that too, whatever, make life easy, control population, whatever. Um, so when they when they go into the clinic uh, and they're a minor, they, then they have to say, okay, uh, and they have to uh, notify the parents or whatever. They have to wait like 48 hours, I believe, for uh, parents. Or, or an adult, you know, to give consent. Um, otherwise, I guess they wouldn't do it if they didn't hear back or they wait 48 hours and then do it. What's the 48-hour rule, do you know? Just the waiting period, 48 hour waiting period. I don't know exactly what that's called. Yeah, a little unclear on that. But anyway, we disagree on that. We were on two different sides of the fence there, and she uh, she believes that uh, that was a good thing. Uh, no, you believe that was a bad thing. You, no, I I believe that not everybody has a perfect relationship with their parents and can go, oh, by the way, Mom, I'm pregnant, and not get the shit beat out of them. So I just think that, you know, if you are, if you get yourself in that situation and you can find a way to get out and not get your ass kicked at home, I think it's a good thing. Okay, but, I mean, doesn't that logic kind of open the door for kids to basically be able to get away with whatever behind their parents' back as long as they can get away with it? They already do. I know, but and so why condone have. it? So you don't condone it. They do, but the reason that they're uh, getting away with something is they're doing something that they shouldn't do. And isn't that something they should have all these unwanted pregnancies because they should and shouldn't be doing things? Well, teach the little sluts to keep their legs together. Keep the little pricks. Get, teach the little pricks to keep their dick in their pants. Exactly, though. Exactly. I mean, that is. I mean, it is in the education. You got to teach people about consequences. Uh, you know, about everything, about uh, sex, about murdering people. You're you're gonna go to jail for the rest of your life or die yourself. You don't kill somebody. I don't care what. You know, I don't care if they were. If they broke up with you, and you don't want anyone else to have. You know, but without getting sidetracked, uh, I believe that um, a child is a child, and I don't think a child oh, no. should be able to have uh, surgery without parental consent. I think that should just be an obvious. And abortion is not surgery. No, believe me, I've had a wart burn off of my finger before, and that's surgery. Have it going up in there with a hanger or whatever they do, what? whatever they do, what do they do? I don't want to know what they do. <laughs> no, but I'm just saying that is surgery. Going up there and, re and having a fetus uh, removed from your from your body and so if it, is it, it's not always the it's case surgery, where no, it's not surgery. It is, and it's not always the case where they were just fucking around. What are you gonna do if you've got the uncle that's molesting this girl and she gets pregnant? You gonna have her keep the baby then? No, but all I'm but saying... But she can't tell her parents her uncle's molesting her. you got to think outside of your bubble, honey. Okay, let me ask you something, baby. Say you and I had a daughter, okay? And let's say, uh, God forbid, let's say your brother is molesting I'm our daughter, know. all right? I'd kill him. No, Justin, not Todd. <laughs> Todd's too smart. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's just say that uh, your brother is molesting our daughter, and, and now you want to say that it's a, she can't come to us it's because your brother well, molested absolutely her? Absolutely she could, but of course. I, I would hope she that has she to. would. She I has would, to. No, I would hope that she would, but whether she would or not is going to be up to her, not to me or you. So she might not, she might want to come to us, but might feel ashamed to come to us and not come to us. Well, whether she tells or not may ultimately be up to her, but whether she has the abortion or not should not be up to her. That's a very important decision that uh, somebody under age, I believe, shouldn't be able to, to make. Apparently the majority went with you uh, on the vote that way, and that kind of surprises me too. In a way, but then in other ways, not so much, because the abortion issue is a really freaky one anyway, and everybody's got all kinds of different beliefs on that based on, um, you know, a lot of it based on religion, based on whether the baby is actually a baby yet at, at that point, at what, at what point. Here's something that me and Sonia learned while we were in Las Vegas at the body exhibit. Did you know that everybody starts as a single-celled organism for like, um, I think it was, uh, it was 12 or 24 hours? 
It is fascinating, it's isn't so it? It's so fascinating. <laughs> the whole bodies exhibit is fascinating. You go and you look at a bunch of dead bodies that are sliced open, uh, and every single part uh, of the body is there, and it's a huge display you walk through, and you, you really learn a lot. I like all the little facts that are written all over the wall, too. But uh, that was one of them, uh, is that after conception, for like so many hours, and I apologize, I can't get you the exact duration of being a single-celled organism, but apparently you were. Of course, if you believe in evolution, I guess somehow we all were single-celled organisms that became tadpoles and then uh, became people. You know how I feel about that. That's a whole other issue. He's not an evolution fan. <laughs> But um, anyway, um, we're 20 minutes into the show, and thank God we got Sonia on here to give the people a break from hearing my voice. SVD, SVD. <laughs> uh, Chris Masters is also back from his trip to Spain, and I'm expecting him to call, but then I'm kind of half expecting him to not call, because I don't know about him. I haven't heard back from him in a few hours. I uh, actually haven't heard back from him today, and uh, he called me a few times yesterday. So we'll see. We'll be uh, happy if he calls in. We won't be surprised either way. So don't be surprised, baby. I All right? won't be surprised. All right. Be on your toes for this. you got to be ready to go either way. All right. <laughs> That's good for your cast, by the way. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Um, what do you think? Should we go to the phone and get, like, a third voice, baby? Please. No, I'm not. A, you're not a Scientologist. <laughs> uh, He's not that crazy. He's a little crazy. Maybe a little crazy, but uh, on the message board it, it asks if I'm a Scientologist. No, just uh, just because you don't uh, just because you don't understand and see evolution uh, as a probability does not mean you're a Scientologist. Um, baby, let's try and take a phone call right here. All right. Hey, there's, how come there's no yellow information over this, though? I don't get that. I don't know. supposed to be able to... Uh, Talk to your producer. Uh, yeah, hey, producer. Dude, let's get the producer on the air. We'll start off with it. Yeah, it says caller on air. Hey, can you hear us, Demos? Yeah, of course, but can we hear you? I'm going to click on it and see if that does anything. Hello, Demos. Is that really your name, Demos? Nikki from uh, Blog Talk Radio is a little under the weather. So we got a stand-in for today, helping uh, on the production end, and apparently... Hey, what's uh, happening? Hey, what's happening? Is we it Demos? It. Yeah, it is Demos. All right, man. How are we sounding? Can you hear us okay? Yeah, I can hear you just fine. Uh, everybody in the chat room seems to be hearing just fine. Okay, cool. And hey, uh, what's it mean if I don't have a yellow box with caller info over top of them that tells me... Uh, if they're uh, if they're just listening or if they went on and what their name is, um, what if it's just still a gray box? What's that mean? If, if it's a gray box, it pretty much means I haven't gotten to them yet. So yeah, I'll get to them though. Aha! Okay, I got you. Yeah, I just yeah, I just haven't put anything in. Uh, gray box is what what it's what it looks like when they first dial up. Gotcha. Right on. All right. Well, hey, as long as I got you on the phone, um, let's put you on the spot, man. Why Why would people care if same-sex couples want to be married? What's what, How is that going to hurt uh, future generations and, and affect kids in school? And why? Who, who Who gives a fuck? Why would you Why would you want to prevent people from doing that? Can I get your opinion on that? Well, Well, I'm on the same side you are, but I can see how other people from the opposite perspective. May have problems with it, uh, with their religion, uh, because their religion defines it a certain way, and right. uh, their so religion defining it a certain way. Yeah, go ahead. I'm just thinking if we're going to be ruled based on people's religion, which for a, a large part we are, even though there's supposed to be separation of church and state and government. Uh, you know, if we're going to be ruled by people's religious beliefs, then. Can you imagine um, the non-ending conflict between all the different uh, groups and, and when they're trying to make laws based on that, how, how ridiculous that will be? Well, it's, it's, it, it would be ridiculous, but that's exactly what's happening right now. And as much as we want to deny the fact that religion is embedded in our politics, we still use dollar bills that say, in God we trust on them. Um, that's not Oh, <laughs> I reached for a dollar bill. Um, actually, 
actually, uh, actually, someone said that. Are you sure that that's still on the on the dollars bills in God we trust? I thought that. Oh yeah, it is. Okay. Well, something. It says legal tender. I guess it used to say uh, something else. It used, to, it used to be backed by gold. That's not anymore. But all right. So it's backed by God. And um, <laughs> you know, it. Uh, you it's, know, another place where it comes in is uh, when you uh, uh, you could uh, you could be put in jail if you lie with your hand on the Bible. Uh, it's called perjury in any court. I was gonna go there myself. So, I, mean, I wrote that on my blog yeah, read, and people—that's yeah, that is a a law punishable, punishable crime. Swearing after you've sworn on the Bible, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. and that's gonna be a deterrent when you're deciding, you know, how you're gonna defend yourself in a murder case. It's kind of crazy, right? I mean, doesn't it seem kind of like, you know, like uh, like something that should have been in the uh, 14th century when, you know, when we were hunting witches? 15th century. I, I agree. It's barbaric. I mean, uh, people are still. Uh, you, one of my favorite quotes, and I hate to throw it out there, but one of my favorite quotes is from a wrestler, Jesse Ventura, and that when he ran for governor, he said, "Religion is just a crutch for the weak-minded." Weak mm, so, very well right. put. I don't know if you look at it deep enough. No, it is. And believe me, I do look at it. I look at it very deep, and and I do see it the same way. I believe, you know, that their the organized religion is basically um, something that's uh, that's really good for followers, and, and they believe that they're connecting their their spiritual relationship. And I get that. It's 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 the same thing tried through uh, a variety of different practices, and it really is about the same thing. It's about connecting with that divine energy. The trouble is, when you throw up all the rules and regulations of different religions, then you're saying that you know, you know, and there's no fucking way you know. You don't know if Jesus walked the earth and if he walked on top of water. I may piss a lot of people off by saying that. They may say, they may say well, I do know because I have good faith. No, you don't know for sure, and that was the past, just like you don't know what's going to happen when you die. Anybody listening that says they know for sure what's going to happen when they die, bullshit. I'm sorry. It's bullshit. <laughs> And uh, so that's the problem with organized religion. But I get that. I get that that you want to you want help. You know. I mean, I believe it's uh, you could do the same thing with uh, therapy if it was done. You know, in such a way that made you feel better about yourself. But uh, yeah, I, I am spiritual, and I definitely do believe there's a higher power. So I guess that would make me agnostic if you're going to put a label on me. I don't, I'm not not one for labels or, or conformity, uh, but I definitely do know that there's a higher power and that I was created. We were all created, and with a reason, too, which is why I'm not real high on the Big Bang. That's an accident. It just kind of happened to eventually happen. <laughs> I gotta well, now my wife's singing the song to the Big Bang Theory. That's a funny show, by the way, if you haven't seen it. It's a funny sitcom. But, uh, all right, dude, well, listen, I'm going to go to some other calls, too, so stand by in case we need you. All right, dude? All right, thanks. All right, all right. All right, thanks. <laughs> Let's see, now what do I do? Oh, it says caller muted. He knows how to mute himself. That's awesome. All right. Yeah. All right. Um, let's go to our New York representative and see how they feel about President Obama in New York. What's up, Harry Slash? Yo, Rob Van Dam, what's happening? I'm sitting here with Sonia. Hey, SVD. What's up, Harry Slash? Hey, what's happening? Uh, I guess New York is is cool with Obama because, like, he, he kind of landslided through New York with the votes. With the exception of, like, uh, Staten Island, he got a majority of the vote in all of New York City and most of upstate. Uh, it's People weren't really voting for Obama. They were voting for change. Right. Well, I, I I also, you know, I mean, I like Obama. I I like him. You know, I get a, a good feel from him. Uh, I like his energy and everything. Um, but, you know, it wouldn't have been my, my top choice uh, out of everybody that was uh, initially available. I mean, you know, uh, he... He's definitely out of the two. That that was that was an easy one for me, you know, and apparently it wasn't for everybody. But don't you think that a lot of the reason that people are afraid of having him is one because he's black and two because they think he's a Muslim? Don't you think that had a huge, huge effect on the polls? Oh yes, it did. Uh, as far as people thinking he's a Muslim, that's just people's own ignorance. He's not. He was raised, I think it was either Protestant or Episcopalian, I forget. But just because a person's name is what it is does not mean he he is what you think he is. You know, people need to look into that. 
As far as the black factor, the one thing I liked the, the most about Obama was he didn't, you know, push the black issue. You know, I'm a black candidate like a lot of them did in the past. Right, because he, he wasn't about that. I mean, Jesse Jackson, Jesse Jackson, uh, someone like that. They, Martin Luther, they're about. They were totally about the black people, you know, and, that, and that's a good thing. Uh, and Obama, you know, transcends across to everybody. He happens to be black, and and hopefully. You know that will help people um, treat people more on an equal level that that deserve to be treated. So you know what I mean? Because a lot of people can't see that. I think the same people that are afraid to have a uh, a black president, a lot of those are the same people that are afraid to uh, to have a same sex marriage. They're they're, <laughs> they're afraid of it. I, I agree with you. People are afraid of change. Human beings are creatures of habit. We don't like when change is thrust upon us and it takes us quite a while to get used to it but the fact of the matter is life changes the world changes we just have to accept it and, and live with it and move on you know it's it's how can you say that you know you know because he's black he shouldn't have been president that's that's ignorant to even have somebody say that forget what it's ignorant about. but i don't know about you um but Sonia and i are, are white we have white friends that live all over the country and and to, to be completely honest with you, a lot of our white friends are ignorant, and and they have the most ignorant things come out of their mouth, and and you just wonder like how could how could they really be that way and see life that way? And it's part of their culture, it's uh, it, it's it, it's like part of the norm, and it seems crazy to someone that that has a, an open enough mind, you know, to realize that uh, you know that we've moved forward since. You know, the Civil War. You know, it's something I've said for a long, long time. It doesn't matter what color your skin is. If somebody guts you, you're still going to bleed red. You know, at the end. Very of the well put, Harry Slash. And that's it, something you got to worry about in the streets of New York City. Not, well, it's not really that bad. Giuliani cleaned him up. Giuliani cleaned him up, and uh, also the uh, Mayor Hundred from the comic book Ex Machina. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and then now we have Bloomberg. There, there is one issue here in New York. I don't know if you guys know about it in California. Nope. Uh, basically, Bloomberg railroaded it so that they did. Uh, they allowed a third term. They didn't let the people vote on it on term limits, whereas the last time it was up to the people to decide uh, whether elected officials got to run for two or three terms. And they basically Bloomberg railroaded the campaign, got the city council to vote on it. The public did not have the opportunity to vote on it, and they passed it. And now the mayor Bloomberg and his billions and billions of dollars can buy himself a third term in office. Wow! Saying Bloomberg's done a bad job, I don't think that it was their right to decide for us whether they could do it or not. That was something the people, the public, and the people voted on the last time it came up. That's right, Daddy. Exactly. Wow. Hey, but who's that guy in South Carolina that was like um, 120 Strong years old? Thurman. Strong Thurmond. How many um, terms did he do? Way too fucking many. Is that just, why is that? Why was he able to keep doing different because terms? Because he was a lifetime senator. He would just go back and they had no term limits set, so he would just keep getting reelected. In a state that has the majority black population, this white racist always got elected. It made me crazy when I lived there. Didn't he actually, like, have a slave or something? I don't know. No. <laughs> he's not quite that no, old. No, he's not quite that old. Drum <laughs> Thurman. Yeah, yeah, dude. Yeah, Times dude. are changing, Harry Slash. Yeah, they are. We, man, we, you just got to roll with the punches and go with the times, you know? You, you, you look back to the 1960s when Kennedy was in office the, the, the press, the media, would never dare question any of his, his affairs. I mean, Kennedy was a whoremonger. Uh, they, they just wouldn't ask him any questions. Now, right. Uh, yeah, as I, the more I'm learning about the Hollywood history and stuff, I'm finding little little hideouts and stuff where, uh, where he would hide when he was – he'd come down here and he'd tell the public and, and tell the uh, government that he was staying at the Biltmore downtown, but then he had all these little bungalows and stuff that he would uh, go party at around, uh, around Hollywood. And, and, of course, he was fucking Marilyn Monroe. Yeah, pretty, pretty much. You know, him and, him and his brother Bobby, but back then – Yeah, tag team. <laughs> yeah, God bless yeah. Him. maybe, maybe. You know, but back then, times were of such that the press – 
were in fear of the government. They would never question or report on something like that. Today, if something like that went down in the, in the office or in the White House or with a president or an elected official, the public knows about it 20 minutes later. You know, yeah, well, uh, of course, but then also, you know, even uh, even in my career since I started wrestling, I, I remember we didn't have cell phones, we sure as hell didn't have internet, yeah. you know what I mean, and it was, information didn't get out that much, you know, and the boys, they could go crazy out on the road, and uh, their their wives would never find out back at home, you know what I mean, because, uh, and then they had like the, the dirt sheets, like Meltzer's, uh, uh, newsletter and stuff like that that some stuff would make it in otherwise you know that 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 was it and we'd we'd be in japan we'd have to wait till we get to the the hotels at night time and try and make international phone calls sometimes only from the lobby they'd be the only phone that would do call internationally and yeah yeah and now information is sent instantly like bam you know i can't wait till we can teleport that's gonna be fun yeah that's coming give them a few years you know, they're eventually going to replace the cell phones with just a chip in the back of your head. Yeah, I'm not looking forward to that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, cool. Well, uh, I'm going to take a couple other calls, dude. You want to you wanna hang out? Yeah, I'll, you want me to mute you? Or you want to? Yeah. All right, you know what? Pop in if you want. I'm not going to put you on mute. I think you can probably hear it the same. I'm going to go check on Ravon from the D.C. area. Maybe this guy can... Tell us a little bit about what's going on in Washington. This is in Washington, right, baby? <laughs> <laughs> Not the state, no. It's the District of Columbia. Okay. Hey, but this is um, not to be confused with Raven, right? It's right, right. Ravon. Ravon. What's yeah, up, dude? What's up, Barbie D? Man, you don't know how long I wanted to, you know, get a hold of you because I don't know if you, rem- if you remember, but it was like a while back. We was in Vegas, and uh, I seen you in the elevator. Uh oh. Do you recall that? Uh oh. Are you the naked guy? Are you the naked dude? Oh no 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 no. <laughs> okay. We was at a we was at a Treasure Island. <laughs> I kept seeing you. You remember? Oh, that you say that I met you in the elevator? Uh huh. Treasure Island. Okay, right on. Well, now I gotta share a story with you though, Rayvon, because uh, now people are gonna wonder where we went. One of uh, <laughs> what? Okay. All right, well, one of the craziest uh, fan encounters that, that I think of when, when people ask, you know, what's the craziest time you met a fan, what happened? Uh, we were in Las Vegas, my wife and I, and we're walking down the hallway, and, and the hallway, uh, it does like a Y split ahead of us. You know, we go to the right to go to the elevators, but to the left on the hallway, we see this dude butt naked standing oh. in the hallway. <laughs> yeah, and he's got these two chicks, these two naked chicks, too, and they're all, like, throwing their clothes on, and we we kind of saw that, and we just, like, kept on walking, like, oh, my God, you know, do we just see that? <laughs> and, and, and as soon as we get around, you know, and he looked up at me, and, uh, and we got, we get this, we have this uh, sixth sense, you know, like, I know when people spot me, they don't think that I know, that when people recognize me, I know I can feel the connection, you know, and this, as soon as I went around, the, you know, it was going around the corner, this naked dude looks up and goes, oh! <gasps> And we went, oh, no, and we, like, ran for the elevator, and we heard, RVD! <laughs> and we're pushing the button on the elevator, going, come on, come on, come on. And this oh. dude throws the clothes on and comes out uh, around the corner, and goes, RVD, oh, my God, what's up? And uh, and we're laughing at him. We're like, dude, you're in the hallway. And he's like, uh, yeah, it's Vegas, right? And, uh, yeah, we... <laughs> that is funny. Don't even know what was going on. I don't know if they had a. I don't know what was going on. I really don't. But uh, you know, when I when I seen you raw, man, I just my heart kind of stopped, man, because I'm a big WWE fan. So it's like, but you I'm kept thinking, your clothes on, right, Raven? Oh yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, awesome. I, I had to keep it clean. Had to keep it clean for Vegas. Yeah, well, even for Vegas. For Vegas huh? yeah, yep. I think. Oh cool, man, we love Vegas. We go out there a lot. That's uh, one of our hangout spots. It's a quick three and a half to four hour drive from where we live, and. Uh, I love the energy there. Did you have a good time while you were there? Uh-huh. People oh, yeah. always uh, tell me, you know, hey, win some money, but I don't gamble. I don't know. I don't I don't really get the gambling part because if I throw it down, I'm prepared to lose it. Anyway, it's it's weird, but, but I like the energy. People are there looking to score, looking to get laid, looking to get money, look, uh, looking to have a good business uh, meeting at their convention, looking to, you know, whatever. I mean, they come to Vegas with all this hope, and they come from all over the world. You know, so the economy there is fed by a, a huge funnel all over the world. So they're a little better off than uh, than a lot of the rest of the economy usually because it's a cool place to go. So okay. where where do you where do you live? You calling like from uh, where? 
I'm in Clinton, Maryland, but it's near, uh, you know, Washington, D.C. Oh, right. So, yeah, we talked about that. <laughs> so, yeah, so what do you think about uh, having uh, President Obama in the White House? Well, it's kind of overwhelming. But, uh, you know, I wish I could vote. I mean, I'm only 17, but, you know. I mean, right on. I mean, that's, uh, pretty that's... much. Go ahead. I mean, like, pretty much, though, I mean. I don't want to be racist or nothing, but like, I mean, people, you know, who really wanted Barack to win because he was black, you know, from an African American standpoint. But I mean, it's not all about the colors, about the issues. You know what I'm saying? Like, but if I could vote yeah. out, you know, just focus on the issues. You know, not the color of the skin. So that's that's my right, opinion. right. No, I agree with you. I, I, you're right. You know, as much as a lot of people would not vote for him because because he's black and they're afraid of having a black president. I agree, a lot of black people would vote for him because he is black, which wouldn't be the right reason either. So you're right, that definitely does go uh, both ways, you know. But, but you know, that that is, uh, besides that, we all have our own independent freedom of choice, and it's our right, you know, to to, to feel however we feel about something and, and also, you know, to go with that feeling. So, you know, I mean, sometimes, you know, when you're, when you're voting uh, for, uh, on a big list of names that are holding county seats and all this crap, you don't even know who it is. You know, you might say, "Hey, I like that name. That sounds like that's a cool name." <laughs> you might check it. You know, so, <laughs> that does happen. You know, so yeah. All right. Um, well, cool, man. I appreciate you listening on the oh, yeah. on the. Um, I'll be in the chat room. Radio, so I'm, man. I'm a respect first in the chat room. I don't know if you spied me, but I'm respect first. That's me in the chat room. Okay, cool. Gotcha, man. I'll, I'll look for it. you got to be, uh, uh, i got to be on my toes to look at all these things i got going on here. So every once in a while I forget I have a chat room for about 20, 30 minutes. <laughs> then I remember, and I go, oh, yeah, i got to check in back there. But got uh, got SVD here with me. She's enjoying the chat room. Okay, and, how you uh, doing? How you doing? How you doing? That's Good, great. thank you very much. She uh-huh. really is. She's so awesome. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's awesome, by the way, that you're 17 and that you wish you could vote because a lot of people, they, they, a lot of people, yeah, a lot of people don't. But um, that means that already, you know, you can get in touch with your own feelings and uh, and realize, you know, how important it is uh, for you to explore your own feelings and not just not just take a bunch of bullshit that's fed to you because you'll hear a lot of crap, you'll hear a lot of lies. And you'll hear it from some people that you think are actually really credible in life, you know. And you gotta, you gotta do your own, your own uh, thinking about it, you know. And, and it starts with using common sense and logic and questioning things. And then, depending on what it is and how much energy you put into it, it could involve some research, you know. But definitely discussing with other people is a great way to go to uh, to share feelings and find out how people feel about, and uh, you'll find a lot of people are afraid, afraid to um, to even tap into their own feelings, you know? Yeah, you're right. That's exactly right. Not RVD. <laughs> no. <laughs> Not SVD either. So, cool, okay. man. So, uh, all right. Well, uh, you know, are you listening on, on the phone or are you on, or online? Oh, yeah. I, I, tune in, I tune in every time I hear your show, RVD. I've been trying uh, to get a hold of you. I just, you know. RVD, motherfucker! Oh, that's right. Yes, sir. Hey, we got miners on the air. <laughs> oh, no, no. Man. It's all great. It's all great, you know. Man, right on. I do appreciate you, you know, taking my call, man. I really do appreciate that, RVD. Awesome, dude. Yeah. All right, cool. We'll uh, stand by. We'll talk at you. We'll talk at you again next week. I'll roll on to some other callers. Thanks, dude. Have a great night. Okay, you too, man. Sonia's waving. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, hey, I, oh, yeah, I think I did mute him. Okay, baby, check this out. Who should we go with now? You pick someone. Pick uh, that one. Mike from Iowa. Didn't we talk to Mike from Iowa last I time? think we did talk to Mike from Iowa. I think he might be a reoccurring character on RVD Radio now. <laughs> What's going on, Mike from Iowa? Not much, Rob. <laughs> How's your night going? Mm, somewhat good. Somewhat good. You're upset. You're upset because you voted for McCain, right? <laughs> no. I didn't okay. bother vote. I I didn't I didn't bother bother with it because just get too caught up in all the people asking you who you vote for and uh it was just. How uh, old are you, Mike? Eighteen. Eighteen. Okay. Yeah. So all right. Well, yeah. You you'll come around to be a responsible citizen. Shit. You're just you're just getting your feet wet. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a crazy saying? I wonder where that started. You just got your feet. <laughs> I don't know. 
Too bad I don't have a high budget radio show. I could ask uh, an intern to look that up and get back to me on the uh, <laughs> <laughs> the origin of getting your feet wet. Yeah. So uh, at 18 years old, what do you think? You know, at your at that age, you know, you haven't really um, you haven't learned about what it means to be an adult yet. There's still, at least from my personal experience, when I was 18, I was still, you know, pretty insecure. Like I. I was confident, but at the same time, I didn't feel like I had as much right as uh, 28-year-olds to make decisions like voting and, and stuff like that, of course, because they were used to take care, taking care of themselves and stuff, and shit, I was still at mom and dad's, you know, trying to work my way out, you know, so it's interesting to talk to someone from an 18-year-old perspective and ask them, because a lot of your thoughts are going to be, at this point, put into you by your environment, by society, by kids at school, by your family and stuff like that. How do you feel about people being afraid to have a black president? Well, I think I think it's just kind of stupid, you know. I mean, just because he's black, you know, there's people hating out there, and it yeah. just doesn't make any. It just doesn't make any sense. I mean, I know several people out from from around here that just hate hate him because he's black. Yeah, I mean, it makes no sense. It doesn't. Yeah, you know, I, I I sure hope that the guy doesn't get assassinated because I'm sure there's a lot yeah. of there's a lot of plotting going around from haters. Yeah, but, didn't, didn't didn't they have like some like bust someone trying to plan to kill him like a couple of weeks ago or something? Yeah, yeah, they did. You know what the story is with that, Sonia? No, I'm I'm sorry, I was reading. The uh, the assassination attempt that got um, thwarted on on Obama was that Tony that was telling me about that? Yeah, my uh, my my news reference Sonia can't back up that information, but you're right though. I did hear about that. I don't have the facts on it. Usually Sonia is my my news and information backup. She usually has. It. I have the common sense. She's got. <laughs> <laughs> that oh. tells you she's very helpful. Yeah. <laughs> but you know though, the main thing is though when I I did watch it on TV last night. I'm not sure which channel it was NBC something like that. I yeah. I actually skipped ECW last night just to actually pay attention to that. Wow, well that's not a bad choice. That's, <laughs> that's not a bad <laughs> yeah. Choice. I've uh, I've been Yeah, we've kind of been uh what what was last night? Last night was uh Tuesday. Finley. Uh I don't so yeah, we uh we've been skipping ECW for for what? Not later. A- <laughs> Whatever yeah. else is on TV. <laughs> uh, last time I think I watched ECW the last time Raw and EC, I think it was Raw and ECW came out here. I think it, I'm not sure what night it was, but that's about the last time I watched it. Right on. You know what you should be watching on Saturday afternoons? What? Also some celebrity wrestling. Yeah, have you caught that yet, Mike? Oh, no, I totally forgot about that. Dude, dude, you got to get with it. A lot of people are missing it. Like, it's doing good on the ratings because it's on uh, CMT. And it's, so it's the highest rated show they have because people don't watch CMT. But a lot of people I talk to tell me that they, they, they keep forgetting and they miss it because it's on the weekends. It's a good show. Yeah. Uh, this weekend is show number four. RVD's on show number five. You're not gonna, you're gonna want to catch it in time to, yeah. Put, yeah, put that on your schedule for next Saturday. It's on like at eight o'clock at night, but there's a sneak peek at two o'clock, which I think means that they show the whole thing. I don't know why, yeah. but Jason Hervey said it's a sneak peek. And then it plays again a couple times on Sunday. Um, yeah. Good show. It's uh, it's interesting. Uh, you know, not not that not that there's not that the wrestling matches are you know like pay per view classics, but but it's about these uh, these people who happen to be celebrities that have a lot of heart that are taking it real seriously and really trying to learn it. And and it yeah. and it shows that it really is competition. We're out there competing because we we want that top spot. We want to be the guy that gets main event money, you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I understand that, cause, yeah, cause like, I, I understand how, you know, how they're just trying to make money through wrestling and stuff, and how everyone loves it, I totally understand that. Yeah, right on. I mean, I tried, our promotion, our indie fed or whatever out here, I've been trying to get started in that, and that's probably not going to go anywhere. <laughs> right on. We well, have a lot of uh, you never know. I mean, you know, do 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 whatever. If you're drawn to if you're drawn to something in life, and, and you find that you get a lot of energy from it, and it's something that's not harmful, you know, like don't go killing people or raping babies. That's not cool. <laughs> yeah, definitely not. 
But uh, but if it's you know if you find yourself drawn to to wrestling, you know then uh, um, the yeah do it for the right reasons. I also got um, Dr. Sean Stasiak calling in and uh, speaking of someone who can't get wrestling out of his system. Dr. Sean, he's uh, he used to wrestle in the WWE back when I did, and he's taken a few years off. He's been to chiropractic school, and uh, now he's a genius when it comes to the body. He knows how you're put together. He knows what you're supposed to put into your body. Chiropractors really know a lot. It's not just about the spine. A really good chiropractor knows the whole body. Dr. Sean is a really good chiropractor because he impressed my chiro, and my chiro is awesome. <laughs> So, yeah, he talks about protein, amino acids, uh, mono, saturated fats, mono, mono. Uh, whole mono a mono, <laughs> whole bunch of stuff I don't get. But one thing is that even though he's real impressive and can help a lot of people, the guy still wants to wrestle. He's got it in his blood. His dad was a wrestler. So, so yeah, Mike, uh, Sean, Sean knows what that's about, too, you know, going and, and working these shows. And I'm going to put him on the line right here, or I'm going to try to anyway. Um, Dr. Sean, can you hear us, bro? Hey, man, you really put me over. The WWE put me over as much as you do. I'd be the WWE champion and a multi, multi, multi millionaire. <laughs> hey, uh, Dr. Sean, what would you tell Mike from Iowa, who's uh, starting to do a few indie shows, and he says, ah, I don't know, it'll probably lead to nothing. What would you tell a kid like that? Forget he his dream? Should he do it and see where it goes? Should he... Is he should he he should believe in himself a little bit more anyway, right? I was being facetious at first. I said, forget it and go become a chiropractor. Just kidding. Right. Actually, what I would do <laughs> is, is I would uh, I would follow your dream, follow your heart, but I would definitely have a backup that is a bread and butter that's almost a nothing's ever guaranteed and nothing's ever a shoe in. But I say to anybody in the entertainment industry, acting, professional wrestling. You name it. Just have a backup that's a solidified bread and butter that you know you can rely on for the rest of your life. And if that comes about, the the wrestling opportunities or, you know, or any kind of acting opportunity, then great, so be it. But you don't want to hold your breath or stall your life or your future family's life because of a big dream you have. Don't give up on your dreams, man, but just kind of keep it in a reality check there. Uh, right on. Well, there you go, Mike. Say thanks to Dr. Sean real quick before I let you go. <laughs> thanks, thanks, Dr. Sean. See, I, I'm, I'm, very, I'm real intelligent, aren't I? I know it all. Yeah. You are. You are, Doc. <laughs> you have no idea, Dr. Sean. Like I said, though, you impressed my chiropractor, and uh, my chiropractor is very smart. And you adjusted him. Here's, here's yeah. how I know that my chiropractor is good, all right? Because a lot of people don't believe in chiros, and... And a lot of people have gotten screwed over, I think, because I think that a lot of them uh, might not be that good, and then they just, you know, want your insurance money or whatever. But a good chiropractor like uh, Dr. Dave Dawson, who uh, who I introduced Sean to a while ago, this guy uh, can look at my body and tell me where I hurt. That's good. I'll have something different. It could be my hip. It could be my pelvis. It could be my lower back. It could be my upper back, my shoulder. He'll do uh, he'll he'll do just a few really quick checks where he just checks the alignment of my shoulders and everything. Go, oh, Rob, you know your your all four is way whatever. And, and to to that, you know, to be able to do that, you obviously are are good at what you do. So. Um, so anyway, Sean, uh, when he was in California, he, he told my chiropractor, "Hey, you deserve an adjustment, Doc. Get down there on the bed." And uh, yeah. and he, he flipped uh, he flipped the table around. Well, not literally, because then you'd have the ups the upside down of the table, and that would be silly. But uh, you put you put Dr. Dave down there, and uh, and you adjusted him, and, and you did a great job. You had him popping like a bag of popcorn, Sean. It was like the Fourth of July. In fact, you know what? I was there for the Fourth of July. You remember that? That was the same um, time wait, when was when was that, Sean? That was last year, 2007, in July, July 4th weekend. I was there. We finished my documentary film, and I, in fact, when you and I had our little segment, that little sit-down, in-depth to philosophical conversation, um, that was on my mom's birthday, which is the 4th of July. So week, I do remember that. Hey, Sean, well, I, was making, um, I was making bone music with Dr. Dave. <laughs> okay, let me ask you something, Sean. Uh, because you live in Texas, which is a uh, a redneck state. You guys are very conservative out there. I mean, uh, uh, I don't even know 
I, I don't even know, man. <laughs> I just know I'm really tense. I know I'm really tense when I when I'm in Texas and I and I can't wait to get out of there myself. Uh, because as liberal as I am, I feel like Texas vibrates at a totally different speed. Except when I'm at the at the Thug Mansion. When I'm hanging out at Booker T's house, everything's cool, right, baby? It is cool there. It's yeah. very cool. Booker T lives in H Town, and uh, we always stay there and. And have a good time, but oh, we get out there and we remember we're in Texas. Once we leave, once we leave the company of the T's, Booker and Charmel. So Book, uh, he's he's in uh, Houston. Sean, you're in the Dallas area. And what are your feelings on the new president, President Obama? You know, that, the thing is, I'm not. You know, I, I feel like I'm not educated enough to know who to, who to really to pick or who to choose. I mean, you talk about a redneck state or red conservative, you know. Republican state. Either way, same thing. Bottom same thing. line is that uh, you know I don't really have a whole take on it. I just I just know that I hear that with socialized medicine, uh, with Obama being Democrat, uh, Demo- I had a long day at work today, Rob, so I can't even speak right now. New job I started, new clinic. Um, Democratic guy in office. It might affect doctors uh, when it comes to being paid. You know, um, I don't know if that advantageous for me. Not really. But time will tell, you know. So I really, I'm, I'm impartial right now. I just want our country to be led better and get out of some of the messes that we've uh, that we've created the last eight years. Um, I really don't have a big take. I'm not a real big political guy, to be honest. I'll be honest right. with you, Rob. Be, be honest, Sean. Right. Well, yeah, since you're thing. going there, when it comes to stuff like that, I think that a lot of people are concerned with his uh, his tax plan, and a lot of the the concern seems to be based on the fact that he's going to increase taxes on people that make over uh, a quarter mil. And and it's strange that so many people are upset over that that will never make a quarter mil a year in their life. I mean, uh, again, you might not know that much uh, about that, but that's a strong concern, too. People are like, hey, I don't want you to text me if I ever make 250 k Meantime, they're pulling in 35 k a year saying, uh, McCain, anyway, um, the reading I get, just looking at both of them, is enough to tell me who, who I would vote for. You know, you get a reading off of people, especially someone that's energy sensitive, such as you. Um, so, uh, I'm, I mean, I, I know, I mean, I can't, the thing is, I think there's, a, you know, six of one thing, half a dozen of the other. I think regardless of who was in office, it's going to be ups and downs either way. I mean, you're not going to be able to satisfy everybody, you know, regardless of McCain would have been in or whoever. It doesn't matter, you know. I mean, I just know as a health professional that I might be affected in a negative way in the long run with, with um, him implementing some of the programs. And, you know, that's beyond my control at this point. So I just, you know, you, I didn't want to make one comment, though. You made a comment about not having wrestling out of my blood. Well, here's the thing. Um, you know, Rob, you know I'm in the best shape of my life, and you know that this business is in my blood. But I have accepted recently in the last two weeks that the doors haven't opened up. And there's a reason for that. So I can accept the fact that I can be Dr. Sean and move on with other business ventures. But uh, just like I was telling, is Mike is Mike still on the other line? Um, he is. Uh, he yeah, he is. He's he's doing okay. Well, my my point is is that I've had to do the same thing. So imagine how how I've had to transcend my mind to thinking differently in the fact that I had to accept that if the doors don't open. They don't open, and uh, there's a reason for that. And as much as you and you and I, Rob, talk about coincidences and being led by being guided and so forth, I do truly believe that the reason why the doors haven't opened is because I am being guided in a different direction. And I have to, for years I've fought We're that. You know I've been resistant to, to it. RVD Radio. You love those things, man, when I'm talking. I always get rocked by that thing. <laughs> I love it, though, man. <laughs> rocked. Rocked yeah. right off the bat. But anyway, man, you know, it's like, Rob, you know, I, I just didn't want to spend, you know, 20 years from now, look back and go, you know, I wonder, wonder what have, could have, should have, you know. So I gave an honest knock at the door. You know that. And, uh, yeah, I know, but I also I, know, Sean, that, um, that right now that you're interested in taking some, uh, some wrestling bookings when you can work them out on the weekends or whatever, yeah. and I've talked to I've talked to some promoters that are pretty excited about that. You know, they said, oh, Sean, Sean's wrestling? I thought he was, he was done. And, and so, you know, why don't you give that email information um, on yeah, RVD absolutely. Radio right now? Anyone's yeah. Listening? Yeah, well, basically, yeah. I'm, I'm yeah, yeah. Indie stuff, you know, uh, you can go to MySpace, 
forward slash Sean Stasiak. Check out the new alter ego character. That could be a possibility. Kids would love it. Uh, well, I have all the name. Ah, Fred, Fred. Uh, yeah, Fred, you relax. Have, yeah. Fred's, very, Fred's very impressive, by the way. Um, and then also if you go to book, Sean Stasiak at yahoo.com. Um, you can uh, you can reach me that way. And, of course, I have my own talk show, which is coming up here pretty soon. In fact, Rob, I've got a test show to do, which you did, I think, last week, so i got to do that here like in another five minutes. But my talk show comes on from 10 to 11 Central Standard Time, and, of course, you'll be calling in like you do every week as a special guest. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, hey, by the way, what is your show about, Rob? I was getting in the middle of it. I'm always doing stuff, and... You know, I, I always listen to the archive. I find out afterwards what it was about. But what, what's, what are you talking about tonight? Uh, well, I should uh, preempt that by making sure you're aware that SVD is in the room, Shizong. SVD is in the house. Holler. What's up, Son? How you doing, Sonia? I'm doing good. How are you doing, Sean? I'm doing great now that I just spread my uh, coconut oil all over my broccoli and uh, turkey meat here. Uh, it works well for the body too, you know. There you go. There you go. Yeah, we've been trying that coconut oil. I've been eating that kick coconut oil since you explained on um, Ask Doctor Sean that that's uh, that that's a great way to to burn fat. And um, I don't know what. Why am I eating it again? You had me convinced because you you know you say I, I take some fat burners sometimes, not very often, but every once in a yeah. while, you know, I'll take one before I do cardio or ride my bike. And uh, your guy G Man was saying, uh, no, don't do the uh, don't do effort right, drinks, right, right. burners. He likes cocaine. It seemed like though. I noticed that. Yeah, he, he popped on that, didn't he? Well, you know, Rob, the thing is, they're called medium chain triglycerides, and they're basically MTCs, and they they're it's a special acid in here. Uh, I believe it's linoleic acid, but basically, what it does when you take ingest this stuff is it attaches itself onto the fat cells that are already in your body, and then it uses it more efficiently to burn, like when you're exercising, working out, whatever. Is it burning more? Oh, someone's trying to get a hold of me here. This phone's been ringing off the hook. Can you guys hear that? Yes, we can hear that, Sean. Very popular guy around here. And it's not even my show. Um, But what it does is it attaches itself to the fat, the uh, storage fat that's already on your body, and it helps burn it at a more efficient rate. And uh, it's all, not just good for fat burning. By the way, when Gary did mention about burning your adrenals out, taking all the speed type stuff, the fat burners, yeah, it doesn't tax your central nervous system, which is great because you're more mellow and more relaxed and uh, throughout the day, which I need to mellow out more. So I probably should be. Yes, you do. Out. And uh, we, we, recommend, like we recommend cannabis. But by the way, since you brought that up, Sean, yesterday was the biggest day in marijuana policy projects history, brother. Why? What happened? I th- thank you for uh, reminding me to bring this up. I got a bunch of calls, and I got a um, you know. Hold on, I'm going to get to you, phone callers. People don't know this. I got you. Got to help me spread the word. Okay. First off, yesterday Michigan became the 13th state to uh, to stop arresting medical marijuana patients. So we now have 13 states, uh, and because Michigan is the biggest uh, state by population, I guess next to California. Or the two of them are at the top of the list, and because of that, we now have over one quarter of the country's population living um, under the protection of medical marijuana laws. That's huge. Also in Massachusetts, where Officer Anonymous, uh, dude, is he is he on there? Oh, I think maybe I see him on there. He should be calling. Um, they lowered uh, possession of having an ounce or less to the uh, to an infraction, so you're not looking at jail time in Massachusetts. If you have an ounce or less on you, you're subject to a $100 fine payable through the mail without uh, lawyers. Uh, in addition to that, there was, there was like, I think, 11 or so um, marijuana initiatives that passed. One of them that didn't was here in California, and that was Proposition 5, which was going to, uh, it was going to prefer drug treatment programs over jail time for uh, nonviolent drug offenders, and it was also going to lower the, uh, the criminalities uh, of marijuana even further from a, from a, um, from a misdemeanor to an infraction. That one did not go, but all the rest of them did go. It's the biggest day in medical uh, marijuana history for the uh, Marijuana Policy Project. So uh, congratulations. We're moving in the right direction. Well, all I can say is I have two words for that, and that sounds very impressive. 
Now, Rob, I've got to go because that's Blog Talk Radio calling. They want to do a test run. Okay, so John, well, uh, oh. good luck with your show, and uh, that's kind of what we're talking about, ballot um, propositions and uh, new President Obama. We're going to be talking about ECW because i got a couple guests from the past call. I mean, one of them is Fonzie, and uh, another guy who uh, you're going to miss if you run out of here right now is going to be Scotty Anton, Scotty Riggs from the original ECW. I may even have him on now. Is that you, Scotty? Yes, that's me right here, Daddy O. Yeah, say hi to Dr. Sean yeah. Cusack. He takes off. Dr. Sean, what's up? Hey, you Scotty, what's up, off? man? Doing good, man. Been a long time since I've seen you. It was uh, 2003, I think, in Birmingham, Alabama. Oh, I think, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I remember that time I was, we saw think. each other. That's right. I remember it was in two, year 2000. Yeah. When I first came aboard WCW. No, hey, when do you guys have actually... your computer on and we can hear it in the background? It sounds awesome. <laughs> it's actually right, me, well, Rob. I'm, I'm kind of multi happy here. Dr. Sean, good luck on your show, brother. And uh, we'll try and uh, we'll be on there. I'll be calling in. Okay, good, man. Cool. I have the G-Man's back in action. So I want you to call in still. We, I definitely be expecting your call. Scotty, nice meeting you. Or nice <laughs> talking to you again. Good luck with the rest yeah. of the show, Rob. And uh, I'll talk to you real soon. Stasiak at Yahoo.com, right? Yes, and the MySpace gimmick with a forward slash Sean Stasiak. Go to that. Check out the new Phobia pictures. All right, cool. Have a great night, Sean. Talk to you soon. Bye. Yeah. yeah. All right, cool. So uh, see if I can hang up. Uh, I've never hung up on anybody the right way yet. No, fuck no. I don't know how to do it. I can't hang up uh. because... All right, What's but anyway, what up, Scotty Riggs? Hey, dude, uh, uh, thanks for calling in. This is a first time our Scotty Riggs on RVD Radio. What's going on? Yes, it is, too. I'm just sitting back here. Uh, I tried at least, at least 15, 20 times just to get through. I yeah, I guess. I, I, just, oh, oh, I just sent you and Sonya a text going, dude, am I calling the right number? <laughs> uh, you know what? <laughs> Fonzie's trying to call in. He's having the exact same problem, and I, I'm talking to talking to the producer right now on uh, on chat at the same time, trying to figure out what's going around, what's going on. This is actually show number five, I believe, and we've had phone problems every single time. Uh, so that's welcome, to RVD Radio. That's, nothing, that's, uh, go, that's how we roll. You don't say nothing's going wrong. It sounds like it's going great. You just can't, you couldn't call because the lines were busy or something. I just couldn't get through, yeah, but kept going, the lines were too busy, uh, recall, recall, you know, I just kept hanging up, told me to retry, retry my call. So that really blows, I, I don't through. understand, because sometimes, uh, oh, okay, that's cool. This is the third time my, my window just uh, disappeared on me, sweet. Anyway, um, that's awesome, man, that's, that's the way I look at it, dude, that, that just means everybody around there is spreading more and more. That what I call RVD TV radio is just uh, getting bigger and bigger. Dude, if only I could hit my RVD motherfucker soundbite right now, that'd be nice. But I have <laughs> lost my switchboard. I lost my oh. switchboard, so I mean, I don't know why, you get, but you need to get that fixed in your production meeting. Exactly. I gotta, I gotta sit on, on your production meeting for at least a moment earlier. Yes, maybe I need more than four <laughs> minutes for the show to. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, hey, so anyway, Scotty, uh, did you vote, brother? Actually, I didn't vote because, uh, like we were saying before, um, I just couldn't find the lesser two evils to vote for. I was I was going to tell you that I would almost want to do a write-in vote for Jesse the Body Ventura just because at least he ain't going to play the, the political game that a lot of Politicians play. He's not going to promise you one thing and then twist it into another. He knows your wrestling gig. He knows, hey, you know, you you portray one thing, but you do another. But he's going to tell you he's going to do that. He's not going to mislead you. Well, honestly. And with uh, McCain, you you know, his vice president, Sarah Palin, and against Turner Air Energy Level, she has the it factor. But if. McCain, at his age, anything happens to him, she's not going to be in charge of the country. And with her having the the family, the the newborn child, that whole scenario going on in her personal life, just imagine trying to be a 
a president of the United States, internationally, you got to deal with, with the leaders, your own personal family, all the kids, your your oldest daughter is getting married. you got all this going on, and you know it's going to go on over the next four years. So if anything, God forbid, you know, happens to McCain, who do we have to rely on to run our country? Someone who already, their personal life is just not ready to be president. So in one sense, Obama is a lesser to two evils to even see him get elected. Because hmm. at least he, you know, at least he uh, is of an age he might not be experienced enough, but Dude, it's, it's like uh, anything else you gain most of your experience as you do it, you know, and he has uh, uh, Biden as his vice president, who has at least uh, 30, 20 some odd years in politics as it is, so at least he has a, a good backing and can at least, if anything happens, he has something to fall back on. That that was my view of it, unless there are two evils, so in one sense... Let's hear two one, but you still don't know what this guy's going to actually do in in leadership in international leadership. So, do you think that it would be wrong to vote for McCain just because um, you think that Jenny? It wouldn't be wrong for it, but it would be like you know, I, I, as I was trying to convey, it's it's a lesser two evils. It's which one do you choose? Each one. There's not really anything steady in either one of them. It's a first-time presidential for either one of them. So you sit back, and it's, it's just like becoming a world champion at any, in any sport for the first time. Are you going to be able to defend it and keep it? Or are you going to be a one-shot champion, you know, whether it's, it's you know, how many repeat NFL champions have there ever been? Um, five. You five. Know, five. You know, I'll be you, motherfucker! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, it, 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 it just comes down to the point of, in politics, you, you, you really got to know what you're doing. And you got to be able to be there the whole time to be able to get all your stuff across. Word. To make anything successful. Bruce Jingo. I love you. Chris Jingo, good friend of mine, comedian out here in California. How stoked are you that Obama is president? It's, I, I never thought I'd live to see the day. It's, it's looking amazing. Is it because of material? Yeah, it is a lot of material. Hey, dude, I'm telling you, Obama's going to save this country. Chicken stock is going to go up, and that's going <laughs> to that's going to save the economy, dude. Hey, I, you know how, um, I don't know, if, if this is a uh, ballot proposal well, that a lot yeah, of people well, listening out in California up. might not know about, <laughs> but it was a uh, proposition, what is it, maybe number two? The, the chicken? Yeah, what is it? Proposition two uh, was on the ballot here when we voted to give animals a little more space before you kill them. Kind of crazy because uh, he, he mentioned, Bruce mentioned chickens, and this is what, this is what the controversy is about. Animals that we... <laughs> Animals that we bring. You know, if you look at it, everybody else talks about, you know, the uh, the pigs and stuff like that, and all the, you know, yeah, the, nobody cares about the chickens. Yeah, it's about the chickens, man. <laughs> well, here's here's a good here's a joke I heard earlier today, Bruce. You can steal it and say it's yours. Uh, I'll tell it fucked up anyway. But they were saying, you know, that uh, one good thing people are worried, you know, because now that uh, farmers are going to have to increase their their prices because they they need more farming grounds and more work and shit like that, that we're going to turn to buying shit from Mexico, right? And people are concerned we'll get salmonella from buying eggs, chicken, shit from Mexico. So that's the deal if you guys don't know. But the joke I heard today that hopefully you'll appreciate, Bruce Jingles, and, and maybe you'll yes, appreciate sir. it too, Scotty. They said that uh, that the uh, the price uh, the price is lower buying the uh, the chickens uh, from Mexico, but the big bonus is when you open up the carton of, of eggs, instead of a dozen, there's going to be about three or four dozen hidden in there. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're going to smuggle in eggs? That got a nice pop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been, it's been actually pretty good. <laughs> so, yeah. well, how, how do you feel about uh, Obama, RVD? Well, good man. I voted for him, and uh, I'm ready for some change. And uh, McCain looked, you know, like an evil motherfucker. Really, I mean, McCain looked, looks like McCain looks like Senator Palpatine. <laughs> <laughs> 
Dude, how awesome! How awesome that you mentioned the song that I have a song by. Dude, that was shit. I'm gonna delete that. That was your hate has made you powerful. But uh, all right, how about this? Who's on King of the Hill? Right. Who's on King of the Hill? All right. I find I mean, your lack of faith disturbing. disturbing. I'm getting rid of all my fucking. Uh, I'm getting rid of all King my fucking Star Wars sound bites. The hell. dad on King of the Hill, Cotton. Yeah. Oh, gee, motherfucker! <laughs> <laughs> that brings everybody together. You know what it says? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. Samuel well, Jackson brings that, everybody I together. I heard that too many times when I was in ECW. It's almost like it's being shot at me in the ring again. You know, it's yeah. funny. It's funny you should say that. I'm wearing I my can't AC. Say it. Hey, by the way, Scotty, speaking of being EC, in ECW and shit, guess who's on the phone calling from Tampa, Florida? Who? Uh, that, that, that's right, Daddy. Bill Alfonso, right down the middle. Yeah. Hi, Daddy. What's up, uh, Fonzie? I turned on you, that damn whistle. Hey, Daddy, and I got my whistle, too. Don't, that's right, don't Daddy. Blow it. Don't blow it. Hey. What's going on, Fuzzy? You know, everybody's uh, really uh, up and uh, having a good time because uh, of the big change last night. I know I was up uh, watching the political uh, event last night, and it was pretty big, and, and I heard you guys talking. Hopefully, there's going to be a change because uh, Van Damme, you said McCain looks evil. He does. You know, it, it said, oh, Aaron. And Obama, I think it's going to be like a JFK. He's got charisma, and uh, I think he's got his heart in it. So uh, I'm doing well. He's, he's like believable. I mean, he speaks with conviction and integrity. You know, he's like uh, um, you believe. You know that he's he's speaking from a good place. And you know, I'm, I don't know. I'm pretty good at reading people, and right away I liked him. And then the more that I got to know about him, you know, it's uh, especially since it came down to those two, that was a pretty pretty easy choice. I'm a Van Damme. Van Damme, you're very, very, very good at reading people. And uh, last night when he when he did his speech, I mean that wasn't pre-written. I mean he might have he might have thought about it for a while, but he was speaking without reading uh, prompters, and and uh, he kind of amazed me. You know what I mean? He went on and he made good sense, and yeah, we got everybody real excited. You know, so and he just like we did back in ECW one night. Stand, huh? <laughs> exactly. I mean, we got the whole wrestling world excited. I mean, what it's about? People got to believe in something. I think Van Dam and and uh, and we were believing last night. So hopefully we get a change because the uh, economics have been uh, tough in Florida. I know the Florida, California, the highest rated uh, foreclosures on homes. And um, I got a lot of political friends in in Tampa. It's a big political era. And I spent a lot of time with these guys growing up, uh, so I'm real familiar with the system, and and um, I think it's going to be very good, hopefully, because 2008 really sucked for me. I mean, that was my worst year since, I think, like in the late 70s, I was growing up, and we had to wait in line for gas. I think when Carter was president, and it was... Yeah, I remember that. You know, yeah. uh, and, and that was kind of scary, and we haven't seen anything like that. That was about the last time, so... I mean, six months of this has got the country, you know, scared. Dude, it's, it's hard to believe that that's our own country. When I saw that on the news recently, everybody lined up for gas, and then when you'd get there, oh, yeah. they would only let people get, like, 10 gallons or something. Yeah, that's we didn't amazing. have that problem out yeah. here, but holy shit, it was just like with Katrina. You know, I'm watching the news saying, is that really in our fucking country? Unbelievable. Uh, we the best to... thing I saw was um, the fact that, Somebody on, on one of the, I think it was Anderson 360 today, uh, he's written an email for some, somebody, I think they were from Florida too. The guy stated that now instead of being a, the U.S., hopefully with the change of leadership, when these guys actually get in there, instead of being the international savior we're going to be, Obama needs to be the 50 state leader that needs to yeah, that, that we that need. State. Yeah, he needs yeah. to start throwing all the money into the 50 states that just elected him. That's where the big savior needs to come to now, in a sense. That's where the uh, all the money and everything else that we're lending out to the world, we need to start collecting that back. Yeah, we need to, we need to, yeah, we need to have it to put it in the house. States. Yeah, put yeah. it in the house. In the house needs it more than everybody else does. 
Yeah, yeah. I'm tired of America being. I'm tired of America giving other countries shit when they got shit pro, when they got problems here. I'm, I'm yeah, really sick of it. Problems, you know, no, and no one else is helping us. We should be helping everybody, and hopefully hey, Obama's going to realize this and go, hey, it's time for all you guys to help yourselves a little bit. We've been the big band aid for a long time. Everyone's been funneling thirty million, three hundred billion dollars to this place and aid to that place and aid. There are 50 states that need aid right now from everything from health care to food to gas to, you know, uh, Social Security. Everything in this country need, now needs aid. And hopefully Obama will come up with a package that goes, hey, it's not just some stimulus deal. It's something that's going to be where well, we give our own selves the aid we need through our government and not through promises but through actually functionality. And and Don't also what needs, and also what needs to happen. Rick also what needs to happen. I'm sorry. Don't what be What needs to happen to? Go for it. What needs to happen to? Is he battle royal on RVD radio? Fuck off! Okay. What needs to happen is he needs to run this country like a business. Yeah. Right like the business well, that it is. Shit. You know. I mean, well, the sad part is everyone is saying. Don't expect any change for a couple of years. Everyone's saying it's going to take, you know, at least another year that, uh, you know, mortgage, uh, housing fucking values are still going to go down. And, and it's like, you know, right now we're watching our retirement money and all, all our fucking uh, savings, everything we worked our whole lives for continue to go down. And there's what faith is about, okay? I mean, that's a good example of faith. You know, we have faith and we hope and believe, you know, that, that it's going to come back up. That's why we keep our money there. Uh, can we compare that to the faith that uh, people are afraid that Obama's not a Christian because he's not a uh, – and if he, I don't know if he is or not, but based mm. on if he is or not, uh, I don't give a fuck if he has faith that uh, Jesus Christ was the Son of God through a Virgin Mary. Uh, I don't care. I mean, I got four or five people on the phone right now, and if you guys all feel different about it, that's cool with me. That has nothing to do with your ability to uh, – to, you know, to run the country, which is crazy because if you believe, yeah, that this, uh, you believe, yeah, this guy walked on water, he was uh, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, he did all this, and shame on you if you don't believe it. If you believe that, that's who you want running the country. But if you look at someone like Tom Cruise and say, well, Scientologists are just wacko nut jobs because they believe that there was some alien that I think dropped this off here on Earth or something, and someone like that yeah. you would want to lock up. And really, they all seem about as believable to me. So yeah. I'm not going to hold I, any prejudice against somebody for, for them putting more blind faith into something than somebody else. That's your personal choice. But you don't know. You don't know, Bruce Jingles. You don't know. Yeah, I know. I know. Well, yeah, I know. That, that's, that's really is true. I mean, yeah, it is, it is going to be your personal faith. That is, you either be strong in believing in God and believing in Christ, like you're saying, Rob, or, mm -hmm. you know, you can sit there and just start poking fingers. But, we can poke the fingers at ourselves and everybody else around us forever. Now we need to change that. And instead of beating each other down, we need to start lifting each other up. Yeah. Hey. One, one thing. We need to start one thing. being a united state and not all this divisional. Hopefully, yeah. with all the Democrats, we get them winning seats in the uh, in the Senate and and all the other parts of the government. With with being a Democratic president and everything else, that that shift in power is going to—they're actually going to try to reunite with the Republicans instead of being so diverse with each other. Instead of trying to undermine each other politically, let's really try to work together and go back to being a United States instead of. Can we all just get along? <laughs> hey, we appreciate yeah, that. That sounds great. Yeah. As all okay. right. He does Scotty, we appreciate your long-winded answers, but I had to put you on mute there to talk, and I want to let you know that I have a ton of phone calls, so I'm going to try to get through some of them. Scotty's still online. Uh, I'll take his muzzle off in a second here, but uh, I'm going to go right on to Tyson from Washington. What's up, dude? Welcome to RVD Radio. Oh, Rob, what's going on? Uh, you know what's going on, man. You're listening, and you got a comment? What would you bring with you to the show today? Uh, I'm just a worker out here in Washington, dude. Just wanted to say uh, congratulations on leaving WWE, and uh, I agree, man. I think uh, Barack Obama is going to be awesome for this country, almost like Bill Clinton was. I mean, he had his faults, like getting a little sucky on the side, but 
I, I think he's just more like a Jack Kennedy. You know, he's more like a Jack Kennedy. I mean, he's a new guy in the block. I mean, Bill Clinton's still that old school, but everybody's right. Obama's uh, different. He's like a rock star, uh, and he's going to be a definitely uh, a good leader. So I, I, don't I, you know, know. He's already making history, and I just hope that one day he doesn't become history. I mean, I heard Amen. that he already had people wanting to shoot him and stuff. And Yeah, like, well, you know, and I'm sure that's going to be the case because they, there is a lot of hate that's very apparent in the country right now. Not, you know, not just with that, but even these uh, – we're talking about these propositions. I can't believe that uh, this vote to, to, um, to uh, basically to – stop same-sex couples from being able to get married actually went through like enough people said you know what that's what our country needs we need to amend the constitution so that these people that love each other uh that aren't like me because they're different we need to stop them and i can't believe what a big waste of energy that is hating people that are different uh i'm not a gay person i'm bruce you know Bruce, you're not gay, but if you wanted to go suck a dick, you know, for the rest of your life, you're <laughs> hey, hey, oh, yeah. you, but you know what I mean? And you know how, right? I mean, how do you feel about that? That's kind of crazy, well, right? Well, like with, with Barack, it's yes, we can, but gay people can't. You know, it's, it's fucked up. It is fucked it's exactly. up. It's it's equality. It's about equality. You compare it. You can compare it to you know being a uh, racist. You compare it to. You know, being a uh, religious difference, you compare it to whatever, but basically they say, no, we want marriage to specifically uh, be stated that it has to be man and woman. That's the only way we'll recognize marriage. Well, dude, what, I mean, why stop there? Why not put your preferences in there and say, well, I want it to be a, a fat um, <laughs> a fat Chinese woman only with, a, you know what I mean? Everyone's got their own preferences. Man and woman, yeah, that's my preferences too. Although if you watch my porn collection, you'd think I was a lesbian. But anyway, <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but you know, other you know people are into other things, and you know, Rob, it's like Scotty said, we need to be the United States. Mm-hmm. We all got to band together. Yeah, and I think with this election, it finally did. I've never seen them like this. And uh, I'm excited. I'm excited to see what's going to happen. Oh, but, dude, uh, it, it, it's, it's just great, dude. It, it, hey, so is so Scotty still on the line? Uh, yeah, let me take the mute off him. And, he's, uh, he's probably still talking. Hey, Scotty. <laughs> American males. Amer- oh, I'm sorry. American males. <laughs> hey, Scotty. Hey, bro, I just wanted you to know that uh, I went and seen you back in 98 in Yakima, Washington, dude, and I was like, oh, you need to get a new job, and you flipped up your iPad, dude. I just wanted to apologize for that. That was like scary oh. shit. I was younger and like, that oh, God, you? come here and kick my ass, huh? That was I have never been able to get over oh, that, baby. by the way. <laughs> that was just back in the day, bro. But have you been getting any calls from the greaser Ronnie Angel from out here in Washington trying to get you to come on one of their shows? Uh, uh, actually, I haven't talked to Greaser in a while, but uh, it's probably been a good six, maybe seven months I spoke to him. But uh, we used to talk a lot, actually. Uh, he brought uh, a shark boy out here, here in his my, 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 my pay. pay deal. Yeah, and, he and uh, the shark boy on his pay. <laughs> so well, I just, the, the minute they, they want the minute they contact me, I'll get my license, and they want blood and urine and everything else. Yeah, it's fucking ridiculous. Like going to just to try to get well, license, I, you know. I went, I'm trying to figure mm-hmm. out. Oops, oops, sorry, 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 I just I just muted you. Um, yeah, dude, so, I got a bunch of calls, so I think I have to mute some to let some other ones uh, take. Okay, uh, I'm out of I'm out of here, Rob. All right, Bruce. Uh, thank you. you got anything to plug? Yeah, I'll be at the Sam and Will Casino in San Bernardino tonight, and uh, I'll be at actually at the Ontario Improv next week, uh, hosting for uh, Charlie Murphy. You can go online and uh, get www.improv.com and uh, get information on that. Okay, sweet man. Whoa. Thanks for calling in, dude. And uh, have a Thanks, good podcast show. I know you will. Hey, I got to get. Uh, and by the way, I'm going to text you later and get the. Uh, I gotta get my card. I got a. I got a fucking uh, ticket for pot. Oh so yeah, for sure. Card. I'll hook you up. And also, I know you need one of these before you go. RVG, motherfucker. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Take it easy. Tell Sonia I said hi. Right now, she's right here. Say hi, to Bruce. Hey, Bruce. Later, Bruce. Hey, hey Sonia. Take care, guys. Right on, man. Have a good night. Oh. Damn, and there goes Bruce Jingles. All right. Hey, Fonzie, you got um. Do you have any info we can put out here, you know, so people can get a hold of you if they want to book you for 
autograph sightings or maybe to manage some young and upcoming prospects? Yeah, anytime. Uh, I think you put it up on your website. I got an email address. It's JT Carrero, C A R R E R O 22 at hotmail.com. Uh, just uh, send me a little, uh, t- you know, text and uh, I'll get back with you. And uh, I'm available for uh, pretty much anything. I'm just um, relaxing in Florida after this big long campaign because I did campaign for Obama the last six months and. And now it's time for a little rest and, and uh, to create some revenue. Thanks for bringing that up, RVD. Sounds like you've got a lot going on, RVD. Everybody's talking, and you, your show sounds great. I'm just sitting back listening. You guys cover a wide variety of stuff. I know your mind's big because you, you're always thinking, you know what I mean, and you touch a lot of different things. So that's good, Ben Nam, and we need people like you to be involved. And get the uh, message yeah, out. I want to I want to um, inspire other people to think too, you know. So we have a lot of fun, and, and you can call in any Wednesday, you know, that you want to. I'm not kicking you off though. I don't. It sounds like I'm kicking you off, and you're welcome to stay. But I am going to go to uh, Paul from Panama City because he's down there in Florida, close to you. What's hey, up, you Paul? Hear me? Yeah, we hear you, Paul. What up, dude? All righty. Okay, I think I'm making an RBD radio first because I think I'm actually the first British person to call into the RBD radio show. Yeah! <laughs> wow, oh, well, you that's love the French. Applause. Well, I'm living in Panama City, Florida with my wife. Uh, cheers, yeah. mate. <laughs> Thank cheers. you, mate. Bollocks here. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> just wanted to... <laughs> just wanted to <laughs> shout out to uh, RBD. I want to say a big hi to her. I've been one saying it for quite a while. I uh, wanted to say uh, happy November 5th to all the British people. It's uh, Guy Fawkes Night. Anyone who's seen uh, V for Vendetta will probably understand what I'm talking about. Uh, kick-ass movie, by the way. Right now. I'm sorry. Uh, Tanya said kick-ass movie, by the way. She's a huge oh, yeah. fan. She's a huge I fan she, of uh, she, uh, England and English movies. She loves uh, everything. She yeah, does. I hope she enjoyed she the Extenders clip. <laughs> <laughs> Right on, uh, but thank, thank you for recommending the Celestium, uh, Celestine Prophecy. Went out and bought that yesterday. Got to read it. Still, on, uh, as soon as I stop drinking my beer, I can read it. Well, let's go to the shop back read it and let us know if you got it because uh, the movie's horrible. Don't watch the movie, but the book was a life oh, changer for me. Uh, right, and I just wanted to know um, if you know much about Feng Shui. About what? Did I, did I say that right? Feng Shui, you know? In uh, China, they do Feng Shui. It's like an energy spiritual thing. I'm probably uh, I'm, I'm, there's a loss of a, a translation here. I don't know, Fonzie, What's he saying, it's Daddy? Strong, it's it's some type of vitamin drink. Oh, you're talking no. about Feng Shui, Nikki Heyman. That's uh, it. I'm pronouncing it wrong. It's it's my British disability. Yes, we're, yes, we're in the Feng <laughs> Shui. Our our house it, it was actually. Um, um, it was decorated uh, with feng shui in mind. Sonia has books. We had an Asian uh, real estate lady, and uh, it, we're very much uh, we're very much about that. We're very much about about the energy. Yeah. So good yeah. question. And lots of energy breeds positive lots energy. Of all, Last of all, I want to say congratulations to Obama. And I feel sorry because I was reading the website earlier. There was actually a royal protection officer, and he was saying he feels sorry for Obama because, like, when the last time President Bush came to the UK, they were flying like three uh, helicopters back and forth between Buckingham Palace to confuse any would-be hitmen. Uh, when Bush was actually in a car uh, driving to the airport to fly out the country, so like, uh, basically, he was saying uh, Obama probably doesn't know what kind of. Uh, protection he's in for, like, uh, last night when he well, won the election was probably the last time he's going to be in touch with his fans, you know, to make... Obama's going to be the most way. protected person on the face of the planet for the first next four years. Yeah, well, well you know, I hope so, yeah. he's speed, because I'm a little bit uh, scared for him, too, you know what I mean? There's a lot of hate out there, man, and that's what it's about. Brother, last night, I was, I swear, I, was, I thought about JFK and Bobby Kennedy in California, um, I swear when he was doing his speech, it was a little bit freaky, but, you know, hopefully our system's in place and we can protect them because it'd be horrible. And, uh, I'm going to let things positive. That's not going to happen, but, um, English, you know that movie I really liked, uh, English Brit was, uh, Snatch. It was called Snatch, had Brad Pitt right. in it. Uh, of course. That was I a good movie. I love that great. movie. He's got a new one out, too. What's, yeah. What is it? Rock and Roll. I can't wait to see it. Yeah, she wants to see yeah, Rock and Roll. Maybe, maybe we got yeah. She also wants to say thanks to Paul from Panama City for the EastEnder sh- episodes yeah. or whatever. Yeah. But also, I want to hear from David from Sacramento. What up, dude? Hey, what's up? RBD, man. Yeah. 
Thanks for calling, man. Better get it in. I got tons of calls, man. Say something. Yeah, better hurry up. I better hurry up. Yeah. Hey, so, uh, um, you talking about ECW? Right? A little bit, man. We can't help okay. it. We got to a little bit. We got so Fonzie Day in, in the house. Blood. We got Scotty Anton, who was the first person to take a Van Terminator live on pay-per-view. Ooh. That was a very special moment. That was moment. correct. I took it, the, the first I was there. I was there. I was there. Yes, you're right, at a house show, and you're right. And then when we did the uh, the only West Coast show, which was the uh, ECW pay-per-view, what the fuck was it called? The uh, Olympic Auditorium. Yeah, me. yeah that one. Uh, thank you, Fonzie, for thank holding the fans for me, and thank you, Fon- uh, Scotty, for catching that chair with the face. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 yeah. yeah. Scotty, sorry for being a little fifth, but you know that now. Well, thanks for not yeah. breaking my nose the second time. Yeah, oh, right. shit, we did break the nose. Damn, Scotty, I forgot uh, about the nose, man. Well, hey, David, you got to have your question real quick? Yeah, yeah. Do you Seven. think, the, do you, do you think like, Vince McMahon killed ECW? Not oh, when I he know brought he it did. out, but when, well, he, brought no, it was it, dead when already. he brought it back. It was dead already. He brought it back to kill it. <laughs> That's what happened, yeah. He doesn't yeah. want the new ECW to even be associated with the old ECW, although underneath he has to kind of want that a little bit, but he swears that he does, he told me he doesn't, he, that it's nothing like that. He didn't think anybody even remembered the old ECW, which, of course, was, was very insulting, you know. But, but yeah, it, um, it, it was hurts. fun for a moment when it first came back, and then right away it got sucky. It got, like, worse than SmackDown or Raw for me from the perspective of, you know, being a performer. Well, not really. I had more freedom there but made a lot less money. There was no pay-per-views. There was smaller houses, so they didn't advertise it. Crap like that. Hey, um... Uh, BC Dub. All right, so yeah. thanks, uh, thanks for calling from Sacramento, Dave. And now I'm going to go to Jake from Ohio. Jake, you're on with RVD, SVD, Scotty Riggs, and right down the middle, Daddy, Fonzie. What up? Hey, what's up, oh, brother? House. What's up, guys? It's an honor to be uh, joining uh, you as panel of gentlemen tonight and uh, SVD. I um, want to talk a little bit about the election real quick. Give some props to your home state of Michigan. No shit. The 13th state now. That's major. It's major. It's about one of them. Not, only wow. be, not only for being the 13th state to, uh, to not to stop arresting medical marijuana patients, but because of its large size and population, we now have one quarter of the country's population under medical marijuana protection by the state. That's, that's huge. It's good to wow. see that people are finally starting to get educated about topics. Yes, they are. It's got to come through. I always believe the truth's got to come out, you know. I mean, the whole system is based on corruption, and they do count on keeping their lives uh, in order for their machine not to fall apart. But I think bigger picture. I think, fuck that, it's immoral. They don't care about human life or the, the quality of people's lives. They care about money. And, and, and I believe, in the long run, I believe that's going to lose uh, to common sense and truth. Enough people will realize the truth and realize common sense. And in one and way, you got to write again. you got to write again. A lot of these laws were written 300 years ago. So, I mean, uh, and they haven't changed some of these laws. It's crazy. Yeah, Scotty, you might have been in the car with me when I lit up maybe once or twice before. I'm not sure. Fonzie, you might have seen me do it before, too. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe once or twice. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Okay. About yeah. When we did the promo. We did the live promo for pay-per-view. With, uh, you guys awesome. lit up in the restroom. That was awesome. So that was a long time ago, but I've learned a lot since then, Fonzie, because back then I was a little more of a, um, I was a little more reckless, you know, and a lot of our exactly. friends. I agree with that. Harry Slash pointed out to me that nobody ever died in ECW, which is fucking amazing. And when you think about it, all those the crazy times that we had back then, nobody died. They all waited until they moved on to another company uh, before they died. Exactly. Very, you know, that's pretty awesome. But anyway, I've learned a lot about marijuana. I've learned why it's prohibited. It's all based on lies and bullshit. And just the fact that nobody's ever overdosed from it, the fact that it definitely is medicine. My wife going through chemotherapy... Uh, go, goes through it with cannabis usage, which which is, does amazing for nausea, uh, for appetite stimulation, you know, helping her keep weight, uh, helping her rest, overall discomfort. There's no question about whether it's medicine, but the very reason that it's illegal is because they say that it's not medicine. While at the same time, the FBI actually grows it and gives it to like five people that are grandfathered in, 
to a program that they had where they, they wanted to treat it as medicine. So now they arrest patients, destroy their lives, sell their homes, allow them to die uh, for this because they say it's not medicine. At the same time, they actually give it to some people. And they're not people that stay quiet. It's like Irvin Rosenfeld. If you Google Irving Rosenfeld, you'll find out he's very vocal. He's an advocate. He goes around and says, look, they send me this coffee can of 300 joints every two weeks. They've been doing this you know, for uh, since 1995, I think, something like that. And, you know, he's always, uh, he's always putting it out there. He wants to help educate people on the hypocrisy and also on the, on the usage of it. There's no reason that it, that it should Holy be outlawed. Holy cow, think about, it, think about it this way. They're mass-producing Oxycontin, which is what, synthetic heroin? And exactly. And that a big thumbs up, and that's more addictive and more people are probably dying off that. And some of that illegally on the streets. For sure, yeah, no exactly. That. That's the thing is they can't that, put a patent that, that, on a plant, that, so they can never own that, marijuana. So some people will grow up, people that will go so through the trouble. It is natural. Sell it and tax it They're like they do here in California and make a shitload of money. Van Dam, in a short answer, why do you think, Van Dam, in a short answer, why do you think it's taken so long to change these laws? I mean, it's, it's happy to say that uh, Michigan got a, uh, the green light for medical marijuana. Why is it taking so long for this? to happen is it money i know it's politics but yeah fonzie we'll do a whole episode on that someday and i'll tell you exactly why but in 1930 okay. when they outlawed it they they based it on lies you might have seen that movie reaper madness they actually used that movie to scare people they said it makes you violent and it'll make you go crazy so they outlawed yeah, that was the first that. propaganda for film and that was one of the only ones ever made back then it was all based on they didn't know and a lot of it was um the, uh, because the Mexicans in the in the South in uh, California, Mexico, they were smoking the pot and and they, they were different. So you know, it all that was one one important fact I learned from Jack Herer that the uh, this campaign was funded by the people who made uh, Budweiser. So um, that's wow. how it helped. That's what's behind that. Alcohol and tobacco stand to lose the most. And then the materials that you can make out of hemp, you can make anything out of it. Fucking anything. It's not just shirts. Over 25,000 different products. And uh, people aren't aware of that. They used to be aware. But it was all, it's all based on evil agendas. That's, that's the answer to the question. Uh, it's based okay. on lies. And it, it got... Uh, it was a plan. Harry Anslinger, the first uh, federal uh, Bureau of Narcotics leader, uh, and William Randolph Hearst. William Randolph Hearst ran these lies in his newspapers about all these children that were getting addicted and going crazy and killing each other and, and a bunch of stuff that, you know, none of it was true. They, they fabricated um, a testimony from the American Medical Association who actually was against uh, prohibiting marijuana. They said it's safe, non-addictive. No one's ever overdosed from it, and there's no evidence uh, about kids uh, taking it. So what they did, they, re they, they had a rehearing the next day after they heard what the AMA said, and they fabricated the evidence. This is all true. I know, you, I know what you know about the Mayor LaGuardia. Uh, Mayor LaGuardia said, hold on, I'm going to test it myself, and wrote his own report. Please Google the uh, LaGuardia, um, what's it called, the LaGuardia, um, I can't remember what the paper's called right now, it's, but anyway, uh, I'm gonna have to, anyway, we'll do an episode on that. It, it's all bullshit. The government does things like this because they, uh, they, they look for profit. You know, it's so the rich get richer, and it's for control. They want to control us, uh, and they want to make profit, and it's immoral, uh, but that's how, it's how everything is run. And if we, if we all of a sudden, you know, do something honest, it will kick the leg out from underneath the horse, but it's the right thing to do. In, in, the, in the big picture, you know. Um, recently, Chris Masters and John Heidenreich and I had a discussion when we were on a trip over in Spain, and we were just talking about the government. This was a couple months ago. It was when we still had President Bush, uh, but this was coming. You know, the elections were coming. It's, fuck, it's been a two-year campaign. It's always been coming. But um, I want to play a little clip here of that conversation that is a part of RVD-TV. Uh, Wait. 
Yeah, so uh, hang out for about four minutes and 20 seconds, give or take a few minutes, and listen to... Uh, <laughs> Sonia and I have always said, you know, that because um, we travel around a lot, we've always said uh, we would not have a problem moving out of the United States. And now, and the government, of course, brainwashes people into thinking like that. Some, somehow that's um, anti-American, you know, and that's like, you know, I'm supposed to be proud of him. I'm supposed to want to die for my country. I'm supposed to want to go out and kill other people oh, that shit. don't live in my country country that think different and then I'm supposed to be a hero if I do that or if I die and they mail my body back to my mom and dad uh, I'm gonna be worse than a hero yeah I feel this I feel this necessity to do that fuck no Vince couldn't understand why I didn't want to go to Iraq when all the wrestlers uh, went out there we got forced to go it was dangerous we could have died you know they, they put pressure on all of us you know I think you one of the few guys that stood up and didn't feel the pressure like look this is my belief mom you know, this is a free country, right? Right. Is it not? But WWE, it's not. It's not freedom. You know? But ultimately, ultimately, it, it was up to you to say yes or no if you were ready to accept the consequences. I was, and yeah. it was just like for me, it was like um, it's easier to explain um, why you do want something than why you don't. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, why don't you want to go? Um, there's no desire to go. I mean, yeah. how, you know, I don't want to fucking go to a battle zone. And, and he's like, well, you know, it's really for the troops. And everyone that went, uh, the wrestler said, is one that you know was a great experience their lives and I'm glad for them I didn't feel the obligation to go and, and feel like I was somehow serving uh, a greater cause right. by, by fucking I mean I don't like to travel anyway I want to be in a shitty uh, what 17 hour plane ride with no bathroom yeah, and all those horror stories yeah. dude it's bad enough just to, yeah. just traveling around yeah. the states yeah. and uh, I had yeah. I just had no desire so yeah it was a big deal like wow well Rob stood up and said no yeah because I was ready for the consequences I mean I was Vince, I was like Vince no I, I'm not going I don't think you're hearing me He's like, well, I appreciate that, Rob, but you're going to find this is going to be a great experience. And I'm like, what makes you think man-to-man that you can force me to go? I'm ready to accept the consequence. I'm not going, and whatever happens from that, I'm okay with that. That became more of an issue for me, just that my personal freedom of choice was, was being taken by who? This guy's not even an employer because we're independent country. Uh -huh. you know? Yeah. And it, I mean, based, I, I really think that that trip to WWE, I mean, it, it does do good for the troops. It does bring them a little bit of hope. Absolutely. Them, but I think it's more for Vince to make him look like he's doing a good thing. Come on, bro. It he, might be. And I know a lot of positive energy is yeah. generated. In fact, I get thanked a lot by people. Hey, I just yeah. want to thank you for going. And I'll let them know, hey, I didn't go, you know. I mean, you're, and, they, and they still say, well, but still, you know, I just appreciate yeah. it. I'm like, um, okay. Well, it sounds a lot like I went, I went to Iraq and Afghanistan because I felt I had to. I felt obligated, you know. I haven't, obligated for the cause or because your boss was making no, money? I know it meant a lot to the company, but I did go there and then I saw the greater cause of it and I saw what it meant to the troops. But it still doesn't mean I support the fact that we're still down there, you know, like I said, years and years later. It's like I'd rather see all these people back at home with their families and not at the risk of dying. But it's still, it is nice if they're down there and they're doing their thing and to see the fulfillment they got out of us. It really did make it a really rewarding experience, but I, I respect your decision and the fact that you just, you know, you, I mean, you're just exercising your rights, you know what I mean? So, like, you know, your First Amendment that, you know, we are independent contractors, technically, you didn't want to go, and, you know, who's to argue with that? Who's like, really, who in the right mind does want to go to Iraq or Afghanistan? Oh, I didn't want to go, man. I, I felt the pressure. Yeah, I was like, man, I don't you didn't want to lose your job. Yeah, I was a new guy. See, but. for me, it wasn't, it wasn't even, it became not just an issue of me being there, besides the fact that it sounded like a horrible idea, a horrible experience, yeah. I'd rather yeah, be home. Very and I was burned out, I wanted to go home, I didn't even want to be with WWE anymore. Yeah. I was already like, yeah. send me home, I don't even want to be here. Right. You know, yeah. that's, how, that's how it was. Right? Yeah. But, yeah. but yeah. I, Vince was like, um, well, Rob, um, uh, I'm not for or against the war on this. This is more about just the troops, okay, and supporting them. And I said, okay, uh, but, you know, I, I think for the most part, they did have a choice. A lot of people in the Army, you know, they choose that. They want to go because they feel that need. Yeah. And um, I don't appreciate someone telling me that I don't have a choice. And that's exactly what I told Vince, you know. In fact, I told him I support my own causes. I have my own um, moral code and I have my own, um, yeah, my own agenda, what I feel is right. I don't need someone else telling me, you got to do this because it's right, because he says it's right, because it's, it's his issue. So anyway, uh, if I did want to go, I would have rather gone by myself than gone being forced to with somebody yeah. else's agenda, you know, so.
the, the the whole thing with the with the government. I mean, that's that's part of the thing. I mean, they they, they teach you that um, you're you're like um, anti patriotic if you if you don't want to fucking die for the piece of land that you live on. I kind of feel like, hey, aren't we all earthlings? Weren't right. we all put here by our creator? Right. Which is a debatable, but it, but it is true right. though. I mean, it's you know we're put here, uh, we're born, you know, and, and we don't all get along. We're all we're all individuals with individual yeah. choices, but we have birthright, and then we have our freedom rights that the government allows us. I'm more in tune and in touch with my birthright. Right. You can't take that from me. Yeah. And I don't. And I don't miss, it's like we were saying, we don't trust, I don't trust the government, I don't trust George Bush, and I think there's, there is some kind of, there is, I feel there is an ulterior motive in the whole thing, you know what I mean, obviously, Absolutely. you know what I mean, so that, that's, that's where I'm coming from too, like, I'm not, I'm the first one to say, I'm not going to fight it for, I love, the, I love living in this country, or not this country, here, somebody's at the door, do we have a guest camera about I was just saying, yeah, like, I'm the first one to say I love living in the United States. I think it's a great country. You know, yeah, there's corruption just like anywhere else in the government. I don't trust George Bush. You know what I mean? I mean, look at our economy. Look at, like, since he's been in office, he's got the lowest approval rating of any president. You know what I mean? So, uh, you know, I'm optimistic. I mean, I don't know if anybody's necessarily really going to change. RVD TV watchers have complete unlimited access to the Extreme Archive Vault containing every episode ever fucking filmed. You're listening to RVD Radio. Yeah. Oh, sweet. All right, man. Okay. RVD, you should be a politician. You know, uh, the Indian princess is small in stature, but she's one of the most strongest persons I know. And with her behind you, brother, or beside you, you should be in politics, brother. You can I'm make too honest, I'm too honest. I'm too honest because I know how how it's yeah, but, uh, there's some money from lobbyists, you know, to push bullshit agendas, and I couldn't do it, dude. I'm honest. No, but you can be one money. of a kind. There's, there's a few guys out there like you, but they they're not. Uh, you know, it, it like all the takers, you know, the hands out. But you can still be you and and, and be a politician at one time, and it'd be important, man. But just, you know, you're young, so you got a long time ahead of you. You can, 20 years from now, after you do all your stuff, uh, you know, knowledge is power. Hey, you, you know, I'd call it right down the middle. You know, I'd call it right down the middle. What's up, Mike from Ohio? No. What's up? Thanks for holding, dude. We only got nine minutes left on this show, so spit it out, brother. Uh, what can I say? Huh? <laughs> I think we left him on hold too long when he was smoking and stuff away, listening to RVD radio. Is that a possibility? Yeah, it's it's definitely out there for 420, all right. <laughs> hey, Rob. Yeah, Mike. Did you get your medical card yet? Oh, dude, I got it a long time ago. I'm a, I'm a proud, not only am I a proud uh, member of having a uh, California doctor's referral, which is uh, Proposition 215 here in California, 1996, we kicked it off right here in California. We were the first state to, uh, to legalize marijuana, and now uh, we have 13 states as of yesterday currently that uh, it's okay to smoke if the doctor gives you a recommendation card. However, the federal guidelines still deny has any medical benefits at this point. Yeah, but yeah. if it's plant illegal. Well, Mike, you're in Ohio. Ohio is not a legal state. It's close to Michigan. Michigan it's is the first stupid. state in the Midwest to legalize it, so hopefully you'll be following suit real soon. You got? You want to shout out anything to Scotty Riggs and uh, Fonzie real quick? Because i got to move on to a couple other calls. No, go ahead and move on. Other people need their chance. Awesome, dude. I appreciate you listening and appreciate your patronage and appreciate your smoking. All right. Thanks, Ohio, for listening to RVD Radio. Yeah. Thanks, Fonzie. Well, hey, Fonzie, you should call them. in all the time, man. I've been doing this every Wednesday for a while. I got, got you, bro. Yeah, we got listeners every week that call in, like Nikki Heyman. I don't know if you ever see Nikki, but at the uh, WWE show, she would dress exactly like Paul Heyman. She'd be one of the fans out back. You ever seen her, Fonzie? Yes. Yes. Well, yeah. say hi to her, because she's on the phone with you. Hey, Heyman. Of Good course evening, I Mr. Alfonso. How are you tonight? I'm doing fantastic. I'm kicking back in Tampa Bay, just enjoying RVD Radio, which I intend to uh, stay in touch with every Wednesday night. 
the bomb. And I've been I've been listening to the whole show. Now I have like three things I wanted to talk to you about, but I know we've got people waiting. So I'm going to go with the one that I came to the show. Yeah, we only got about four or five minutes left. So what you got? Good for you, Fozzie. Talk to me. Okay. What what kind of advice would you have for an aspiring manager? Since you are a manager of champions. Um. Uh. Quick is uh, study. Study the business, to, you know, and ask questions, and um, being in the right place at the right time. It's, it's you know, it's it's way different now, but um, um, just don't give up. You know what I mean? I've got my fingers crossed. I've got a couple of weeks down in the uh, Southwest Ohio area that are interested in me as a manager and as a general manager. So I've got my fingers crossed that someday you'll you'll see my ugly mug on TV too. All right, you got anything else? Don't be afraid to ask questions either. Because only uh, the only stupid question is an unasked question. That's so you, you're absolutely right, Scotty. Mind, and ask, experience ask, is the best teacher. I, yeah. I really appreciate it, guys. Tomorrow night, uh, primetime wrestling in Cincinnati. Jimmy Wang Yang is giving me an awesome opportunity. Um, cool. go, go to my MySpace and take a look at uh, PT Wrestling. MySpace.com slash LCNH. Thanks again, Zen hey. Racer. See you next week. Hey, good luck and be yourself. You know, be your own character because ninety percent of our our characters on TV are us, just with a little twist. You know, but thanks for calling R V D Radio. Yeah, right on, Nikki Heyman. Hey, and Sonia says thanks, Nikki, as well. Um, hey, Fozzie, when's the last time you talked to Harry Slash? Um, probably uh, towards the end of uh, ECW. Well, that was a long time ago. Harry, say hello to Fonzie while you're listening to RVD Radio, brother. Yo, what's up, Fonzie? Harry Slash, brother. You one of the coolest dudes I know. You're so laid back, brother. We never knew you were backstage, but you always backstage. You loved it, man. You're the man. Thank you. How do you remember Harry? Hey. Yep, I got Scotty Riggs and Fonzie, Harry Slash. And, uh, hey, what's up, Scotty? Slash, what's up, Daddy? Yo, I was me and Sigmore actually doing a uh, couple of shows of Virginia, and I pulled out a disc, and it was a disc you sent me with the clap song on there. Yeah. And at the end of it, got El- you got Elvis saying, "Hurry up and give me a volume." Yeah, that was me, man. <laughs> Dude, that was sweet, man. We we were laughing so hard. We listened to it like ten times in a row. It was awesome, man. That was I, just I one of the best the things you created was. Yeah, exactly. So the whole crap thing was a rib, so but it was a great rib. The fans loved it. Yeah, it's actually it, over the years. It actually got over. Years and you know why years. Harry said it was so, so cool with us? Because uh, he has talent. You know what I mean? He's talented. That's why you fit right in. All the talent yeah, the boys quick. Thank you, Fonzie. Yeah, so Harry Slash is our New York uh, referral. He's He's our New York representative when we need to get... Uh, some uh, some news or some feedback from the East Coast, you know. He's he, he's a regular exactly. recurring character. We'll, we'll have an action figure of him made in no time. Harry Slash <laughs> used to do the music in the original ECW for everybody listening. Uh, Harry Slash is a legend. He's a legend, Daddy. Legendary. Hey, so listen, guys, we're we're about done with the show. Before we go, Scotty Riggs, have you got anything you want to plug? Uh, yeah, just, uh, go my MySpace, as, as uh, pit rockish as that is nowadays, uh, MySpace does Scotty Riggs, I'm the only one out there, nobody else would want to fake being me even, so, uh, you know, it's legit, because there's only one me there. So okay, there you go. I read all my own stuff, and answer all the old stuff, straight from me. Awesome, dude. And, uh, Fonzie, one more time, what's that email address that you got? Hey, Van Dam, thank you so much for having me on the show. It's jtcarrero22 at hotmail.com. Um, I'm available on weekends, and also um, it looks like I might be available for these uh, Rob Van Dam radios. Uh, I love it. RVD radio is just fantastic already, and I love to be back. Uh, That's awesome. Possible. And by the way, Fonzie, you're going to be on RVD TV this Friday at robvandam.com. Uh, you'll be on the RVD TV episode. Right. Officer Anonymous calling in super late, sliding in right before the doors close. Congratulations on Massachusetts passing the initiative. What's up, brother? You got about 10 seconds, dude. Congratulations, Massachusetts. You don't have to waste your time arresting people for pot anymore. 
What's up, Fonzie? Nice to hear your voice again, my man. Yeah. Oh, it's great to be on RVD Radio, man. I love it. Massachusetts, the bomb. Right on, man. Sorry you had a hard time getting in. You said the lines were busy, uh, officer. Anonymous, but uh, the guys that did get through, thank you, and thanks for calling in. Thanks for everybody listening. Uh, everybody, man, let's uh, move the party on over to Blog Talk Radio slash Ask Dr. Sean. I'm going to take a little break, then I'm going to call him, and uh, anybody else that wants to move the party on over, I'll see you there. Boom. The Drop that down. The whole fucking show. Drop that down. Crack. Uh, you get down to your brain. Striking a dog crack. 